previously on the No Bimpy channel. In the house? What's that? I'm about to make that. It's like a little pillow turd. Oh, but crying out. And coming up. I find you very rude. <laughs> the Novimpia Chanel is made possible by our gorgeous patrons who get access to the most unappealing crap you'll find anywhere on the whole internet. Cue the snafu! Oh, hi. So, I have been getting a few messages the last year or so to do another wig tutorial. Are you leaving later? You can leave. Um, and I've been a bit reluctant to do one because I feel like, although I'm getting a lot better with wig styling, there are so many wig stylists out there who are professionally trained and know the industry so much better than I do. And I kind of feel a bit like a fraud um, actually trying to teach anybody as if I have any authority to pass on this knowledge. However, I think if I approach it from the point of view that like this is just how I would go about doing something, um, and if that helps somebody, that's great, rather than this is the way you should be doing it. I think that's probably the best way for me to approach this kind of video. So today I'm going to show you guys how I go about restyling an older wig. So this I've had for a very, very long time. I wore her on Come Dine With Me and have styled her a couple of times since then. This wig has just been shoved in a corner of my room, <laughs> waiting to have some love and some TLC. So um, I thought we could just give this a bit of a restyle and just do a classic side part like it is now and maybe put some nice loose curls into it and some extra layers um, and just breathe some life into it. I also really like this colour, I like the grey, I like the purple. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited. The first thing I'm gonna do is give this a wash before I do anything else. I'm gonna give it a shampoo and that will help break down any old hairspray or products that was inside this wig so we can more easily brush out the teasing, which is gonna be the next thing that we do. So I'm using a wig shampoo here, but honestly it doesn't matter too much what kind of shampoo you use. Um, I'd probably recommend a clarifying shampoo because clarifying formulas really help to lift old product and dirt off of the hair fiber. But avoid fancy shampoos or moisturizer shampoos. Synthetic hair doesn't have a cuticle, so nothing is going to penetrate the hair fiber with a synthetic wig. So I'm applying the shampoo rather liberally and then working it into a really nice lather. Once everything is looking really sudsy and soapy, I'm gonna rinse this off with a shower. And this is a step that you can repeat a couple of times if your wig is particularly dirty. This one was not too bad, so I only did one shampoo. To finish off the shampooing process, I'm going to hang this wig up to dry. This is the quickest way to dry your wigs. Okay, so it is all washed and clean now, and I've mounted this onto my wig block. I'll put a link down um, in the description to the, I think it's a bobby pin tutorial that explains how to properly mount your wig onto the wig block. And it is important because it makes it nice and secure so you can give it a bit of a tug and the lace is gonna stay intact and everything's gonna be secure. Um, so the very first thing I'm gonna do now that it's clean is give it a really good steam and a brush through and that's gonna loosen up some of this teasing before I go through section by section and brush it out properly. So let's do that first. Can you see how that's already got rid of a lot of the volume? Um, you can skip that part, I just find it a lot more manageable when we do actually go in to section it. So now I'm gonna start right at the bottom in the neck and I can actually feel my old section from where I previously teased this. So that's what I'm going to be using. And of course, you can use your old teasing. If you've done a good job with it, if it's still tidy, you can either top it up and add to it, or you can work on top of the old teasing. 
but sometimes it just needs to come out and you just need to refresh and start again and that's kind of what I want to do this time. So I've got the old teasing here. I'm going to try and break it up a little bit with my hands and then it's going to be pretty much the same process. This can take a little while. You want to try not to rip any hair. You want to try not to break any hair. So I'm going to start at the bottom and work your way up. When it starts to open up a bit, I'm going to pause and just start to brush this out. Okay, so I have done the majority of this off camera because it's actually been a while since I've combed that old back combing and it is a much more labor intensive and time consuming job than I remember. I feel like in a lot of cases, it might make more sense just to buy a new wig. But I mean, these things are plastic if they're not human hair. We are trying to be more eco-friendly. We're trying to get your money's worth and it is possible to completely refresh these wigs and start again. So I'm just trying to show you that that is a possible thing to do. Um, that is what we're doing on this one. I have got one little section left here that I thought we could do together and I'll show you the process in more detail if I turn this around. So the first thing I'm gonna do is these ends here just to make things easier. I'm gonna brush those out. Oh, and I should say you want a metal bristle brush for this. Normally this is going to be too harsh for most wig styling, but this is really gonna get into those knots and tangles and get them out. So after the ends are kind of free, I'm going to take the teasing here with my fingers. This is really hard to show on camera, but I'm gonna take the, the teasing here with my fingers and kind of pull it apart. And I'm just trying to stretch open some of those knots and loosen up the teasing. This is gonna make it look kind of fluffy and fresh again, like that. And then the first thing I'm gonna do is just loosely brush it out. Because sometimes a lot of it can come out just with a brush. And this you're doing the opposite to what most people will say to brush from the ends and work your way up. This you're trying to brush out some of this teasing and follow it through to the ends, which seems backwards. <laughs> Once you feel like that has kind of gotten as far as it's going to get, then I'm gonna take very, very small sections over my finger here, and I'm just trying to kind of ease it away from the main section. I'm pulling this out, so I'm like freeing a strand of hair here. If there's little knots in here, that's where our metal brush comes in. They, they can be brushed out. And I'm gonna be doing this going throughout this whole section. And eventually we should have loose kind of frizzy hair that we can steam smooth. So I'm taking a similar size again, and I'm just pulling it away. And I'm gonna do this throughout the whole, the whole section. So you can see now why doing this on an entire head of hair, it's very time consuming and labor intensive. But if you're on a budget or if the wig has sentimental value, if you're particularly environmentally conscious, it is worth doing. What I would say is when you're working around the front, be careful of how much force you're using. It can be very tempting to just like rip the knots out, but you want to make sure you're not damaging the lace here. If you get a section here and you feel like this is a little bit too tough to actually break apart, just split it in half. Take less hair. And then you'll find you can come back and get the rest in a second pass. So here's the hair that's like free from that section. We can give this a brush through now. I'm going to do the rest off camera and then we will give this a steam to smooth it out. So 
Ta da! What we want to do is just slice this off in a straight line. It looks like it has already been to a degree, but there has been a lot of breakage. So I think I'm going to take off like maybe an, an inch, two inches. Yes, Luther. <laughs> and because we're curling it, this doesn't have to be exact. So for this start, it really doesn't have to be exact because it's all going to be curly and wavy. But that has given a, a bit more swish at the bottom. Now it is time for the roller set. I'm not going to go into huge detail about roller setting because that could be a whole video on its own and there are plenty of YouTube tutorials that will tell you all about roller setting. But for today, I'm going to be using a set pattern that was sent to me by um, Bobby Z when I took one of his classes uh, a few years ago. It's probably warped a bit from that because I've stopped using the reference picture. Yes, hello Luther. And I've just kind of been doing my own thing, but that's how this set pattern began. It was as, as one of his setting patterns. Um, I'm using a combination of two rollers. I'll put the sizes in the description because I actually don't know how big they are, but I'm going to be using the smaller purple ones for the majority of it and then um, I'm going to be finishing off with these slightly bigger peach rollers. When you're roller setting you're going to want to start at the front of the head and work your way back and I'm going to start here. I've made quite a deep parting. I'm going to start to the side of the part and that is going to come diagonally back like this. So I'm taking a section of hair about the width of the roller. When your sections get wider, you might have to take a thinner section of hair to go over it. And I'm just going straight up. Um, if you start researching into roller setting, you'll learn about um, rolling on base and off base. Yes, Goose. But honestly, for the purposes of this, so long as everything goes in the same direction, it really doesn't matter so much because we're going to be teasing it out anyway. You just want all the curls to kind of go in the more or less the same direction. So here's our first roller, nice even tension, and I'm just shoving a pin in that. We're gonna carry on going down here, and then I'm gonna do sections, horizontal sections going around the head. Okay, so now we have a full head of rollers. The next thing to do is to set this with heat. So you can either dunk this entire thing in a giant pot of boiling water, that will totally work. Or if you have a clothes steamer, this is what I would recommend. Now I've got a, it's basically like a bag for life here and I've cut a small hole in one side. And I'm gonna pop this over her. Do not do this with any bags that have printing or designs on the inside because the ink can transfer onto the hair. Um, I'm going to tie this in a loose knot underneath and we'll let the steamer heat up. I'm going to be filling this bag with steam underneath facing the back of the hair and I'm basically going to do this until the steam is completely empty of water. I've got quite a big tank on this. Should be about four minutes or so. And then you'll have hopefully a nice even heat distribution inside the bag. So we've got steam coming out the top. It's going underneath and I'm just holding it there. And I can start to see steam escaping at the back of the bag. What I will do is every few minutes or so, I will move from side to side. But generally speaking, I'm just holding this here for about four minutes. So you should be able to feel it's really nice and warm, almost hot to the touch through the bag. I'm now going to wait until I stop seeing steam coming out of this hole. Now, you don't have to do this next step, but just to be absolutely certain that this heat has penetrated to the inside of every single roller, I sometimes like to go over each roller individually to make sure it each gets special attention. So I'm just gonna press for a few seconds now on every single roller individually. And I'm working from the bottom up because heat rises. And this way, 
the last few rollers are getting a little bit of extra heat. Before we take these rollers out, this needs to be completely cool to the touch. It's not super important that it's dry because it's synthetic hair, but it has to be cool. Um, the easiest way I find living in the UK is to just stick this outside. That tends to cool it very quickly. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Okay, so this is now completely cool to the touch and it's actually pretty dry as well. So we're gonna start backwards at the bottom here and I'm gonna take one roller out and this is kind of like the moment of truth. We're gonna see if we have got a curl. Ta-da, that's a good sign. So I'm gonna carry on now and take the rest of the rollers out. So I'm now dividing the hair into two and I like to keep the bottom two tracks unteased. I think it's a nice way to kind of hide the teasing. It leaves it smoother and loose underneath. So I'm getting about maybe two inches thickness of hair here and I'm just clipping the rest out of the way. And now I'm leaning the head down. And this is a wig brush. It's got bristles here and you can section with like the tail end of it. And again, I'm gonna work in halves for now. So I'm leaving the bottom two tracks, brush out the ends, and the magic here. This was a tip that I picked up from Vanity, Wigs by Vanity. You want some mattifying styling powder. This is really gonna transform your teasing. I'm putting some of this at the roots here and it just gives you so much more grip. So for a section this wide, I think I'm gonna split it into three. So I'm gonna take a middle third first, and that's where I'm going to start. And then it's exactly the same process as before. So brushing through the ends, powder on the roots. Lifting it straight up. And then pack, 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 and pull through. Pack, 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 and pull through. Once I'm all out of hair in my hand, I'm holding the section again, smoothing out the ends, taking my comb, and pushing the teasing back up towards the roots, and then combing or brushing out any excess tangles. Like so. I'm gonna repeat this up until I get to the ear tabs, exactly how I did just then. And depending on the thickness and the quality of the hair, I'm gonna take about three tracks at a time. So coming along really, really nicely. Now that I've hit the lace, where I said the ear tabs, what I really meant was the lace. Um, I just wanted to show you guys that what I am doing is I'm leaving about an inch at the front here out. I'm not teasing that yet. So this is gonna be the whole of the lace and maybe half a centimeter into the actual cap itself so I can have those two sections blended. Because what I'm gonna do is tease out the front separately. If I tease the front with the rest of it, we would have a lot of vertical lines here from the sectioning going all the way up. Teasing the front separately, I can take wide sections and tease it backwards. So it helps to get a bit of smoothness around the face. Okay, so this side is all teased out. I'm gonna stretch these two sections like I did with the rest of it. 
And now I'm, I'm going to use a brush with softer bristles on. These are not metal bristles, if you can see that. And this way I can use this for smoothing, but it's not going to upset the teasing too much. And I'm literally going to start just brushing the hair from the roots out. And I'm just trying to get this smooth. Being very, very gentle. I'm going to go into the parting a little bit as well. And I'm just trying to create like a smooth layer over everything. And when I'm fairly happy with that, I'm going to use the light hairspray to fix it in place. I'm not going to go in with any strong hairspray until I've done the same on the other side and I'm absolutely sure everything is how I want it to look. Because if I just use this light hairspray, I can still brush it out. It's not super strong. So I have a little bit of an opportunity to kind of press the undo button if I decide I don't like something. I'm going to start doing the other side off camera and I'll come back when we're at this centerpiece here. So I've teased this out and I started to smooth it and then I realized actually I should probably show you guys because it's a little bit different this side. Around the sides here, I'm doing exactly the same. I'm just brushing away quite gently until it looks a little bit smoother. I'm not worrying too much about the ends just yet. But then when I get to the top here, I'm kind of treating this almost like it's clay. I'm sculpting a shape here and I'm letting it guide me into the shape it wants to be. I'm starting out by smoothing the front here like this. But then I'm going to go into the parting and I'm trying to smooth that out as well. And then the top, I'm smoothing out. Anything that's visible. So the front here is almost going to be like a, a sort of wedge, if that makes sense. And I'm just slowly forming it into a shape with this brush. This is something you don't want to rush and you want to take your time with because this is kind of the final stage to the actual styling before we fix it into place. So just take your time, be gentle and smooth, smooth, smooth. So <laughs> I'm not sure how much I just recorded. This might be quite an awkward cut because I went to press stop on the camera and it actually pressed record. So I don't know how much I'm missing. I'm just gonna recap very quickly. Once I am happy with how this is looking, I'm sealing it in with a product called Pump It Up. This can be found in the black hair section of most beauty salons. I've never seen it in the UK though. I buy this on Amazon and eBay. And I am basically dowsing the wig in this stuff. It's a freezing spray. It will go on very wet and sticky, so do not touch it. I would leave it overnight to dry. But I'm really focusing on the root area because I don't want those to budge at all. And then when I did the, the kind of got to be helmet shell, I'm going over that as well in the back of the sides. So I've already used this on this wig. I'm not going to do it again. I don't know if I got it on camera or not, but I'm going to leave it overnight now and then I can try it on tomorrow. So here she is, in all her splendor. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I have to say the ends are feeling quite dry still, like they're quite frazzled. I think I probably could have done with chopping off a few more inches of this wig. But when I said at the start that I have had this wig for so many years, I was not kidding. So all things considered, also because all the purple is on the end. So if I take too much off, I'm going to lose the purple ombre effect. But um, on camera, I think this looks really cute and it has got some shine to it. I do like this style. This is kind of like just a really go-to style for me. The kind of like side part, big, loose curls. I think it looks really nice. Hopefully this video was either useful to you or of interest. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the Novimpia channel. 
I haven't done a tutorial for a very, very long time, but a few people over on Patreon were asking for wig tutorials specifically. People do sometimes ask for wig tutorials, and I always just feel like I'm not really the kind of person to show you how I do things. Because I am predominantly self-taught, I don't want to teach you bad habits, but I thought just showing you kind of how I approach things might help you figure out your own way to approach wig styling because it can be a very personal thing. So anyway, I'm blathering on. Hopefully this answers the age old question of is this content? I'm hoping this is content. Tell me in the comments if this is content. <laughs> If you have a little look in the description below, you will find out that we have a Patreon. Our community on Patreon is so, so cool. We have a separate Discord for all of our patrons that are very, very active. And um, certain teachers get to suggest videos. It's, it's really fun. It's like a big family. So check that out if you are so inclined. And we also have a Twitch and we stream multiple times a week. Normally Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I think I'm currently playing Silent Hill 3 and Final Fantasy 13, I believe. But check that out if you want some extra Novimpia crap in the week. Okay, I think that's enough. I filmed so much <laughs> today. I need to get out of drag. But thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye! And a very warm welcome to our newest patrons, Christian Strand, Abby Taylor, Jack Fortuna, Kirsten Richards and Christopher Caruthers. Join the Patron, we'll do a shot of Patron.